Hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on creating a connected customer experience. Um, I'm your host, Gina Torelli from Scubana, um, and we're really excited to get started. Uh, a few logistics. Um, I will be starting some polls, so um, answer those if they're relevant to you. Um, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat box and um, we'll be able to answer them at the end of the uh, presentation. And uh, we also have some resources available in the handouts drop down on the right hand side. So um, we have some overviews and some more information on the speakers today. So uh, check those out. I'm gonna give people a few more minutes to uh, log on. So in the meantime, I'm gonna launch the polls and uh, we'll get started shortly.
Great, so uh, we're gonna get started now. Um, this is building a connected customer journey. Uh, we're joined by Mute6, Octane AI, Pixels, Just Do Know, and Refersion. And we have some great speakers today. Sorry about that. Um, we have some great speakers today. Myself, Gina Torelli from Scubana, I'll be hosting. We also have Margaret from Refersion, Brian from Pixels, Rob from Justuno, Katie from Octane, and Peter from Mean6. So here's a few things you'll learn today. Um, we're gonna be covering how to build a connected channel ecosystem, how to attract consumers and attract them using influencers at scale, um, how to personalize your journey with AI, how to power your sales with Facebook Messenger and SMS, how to edit product photos to support sales, drive conversions and reduce returns, and how to con create contextual messaging that um, can be used across channels and everywhere customers interact with your brand. So let's get started. So retail has pretty much become an all you can eat buffet made up of marketplaces, retailers, brands, and products. But to stay relevant, brands need to form customer connections everywhere they shop. That goes from digital to real world touch points. And these tailored experiences need to have enough context to convert prospects inundated with choice because price is no longer going to set you apart. In fact, 66% of customers are willing to spend more on a great experience. And shoppers aren't afraid to see what's out there. 54% of consumers admit that they visited multiple websites before settling on what to buy and who to buy it from. People are shopping at pop-up shops, uh, physical brick and mortar retail, um, pop-ins, which are retail partnerships um, where a brand might host a shop inside a larger department store, um, mobile, online options, marketplaces, and more. So what can brands do to set them apart? Well, they could use influencers to drive awareness. They can use chat box to provide support and to drive purchases. Um, and they can even now use artificial intelligence or flawless product photos to convince and convert those visitors and ultimately make those purchases. And when a customer finally does make a purchase, brands are gonna need a flexible operation software that can plug into each touch point and fulfill orders at scale across channels. But before we get into the speaker section, I want to highlight a few stats from Salesforce's Connected Customer Report. You can see here that customers are expecting positive experiences regardless of where they engage. And connected experiences are really important to win their business. They're expecting brands to recognize them wherever they shop. And nearly half of customers admit they have zero patience for disconnected experiences. So how can you create a connected customer journey with the right technology? So with that, let's get started. Um, I'll be covering the Scubana portion. Scubana is a distributed order management system. It allows brands to connect into each of their sales channels, uh, whether that's Amazon, eBay, Shopify, BigCommerce, um, and automate operational processes like fulfillment, um, purchasing, and more. And if you stay tuned to the end of my section, there will be a little bonus surprise, so stay tuned. So here we go. This is building a connected channel ecosystem system presented by Scubana. Here's what we'll be covering today. What you need to be D2E, because it's no longer about being direct to consumer. 
you have to be direct to Amazon, direct to eBay, direct to pop-up shops, direct to everywhere. And why Amazon is important for your customer experience. With over half of transactional queries happening on Amazon, there's no reason you shouldn't be where your customers are looking for you. And then finally, how to identify your biggest spenders across channels. Understanding the value of customer insights so you can build reputation on a customer's terms. So we're currently seeing a widespread adoption of omni-channel retail strategies. Digital advertising costs are skyrocketing as more direct-to-consumer brands enter the fray. Brands are actually being forced to embrace things like offline, pop-up shop, marketplaces, retail partnership, something that was foreign just a few years ago when everything was just about being direct to consumer. But <clears throat> unifying these channels actually requires a com complex system that are able to connect to these distributed databases so you can understand what's happening at any given point. So let's take a look at Four Sigmatic, which has mastered this multi-channel approach. They're famous for their mushroom teas, uh, the legal kind. Uh, not only do they sell on their primary digital storefront, which I believe is powered by Shopify, I mean, they're selling on Amazon, eBay, and even Sephora. They also have really cool pop-up shops uh, around the country where you could go in and just try their teas for free. They have a unified experience no matter where their customers shop. So you could see the product descriptions are the same. They have really detailed photos. They've really mastered this multi-channel approach. But before we get carried away, omni-channel ambitions are nothing without multi-channel infrastructure. Here's the skinny. A single sales channel is no longer viable. Therefore, to attract and retain customers, you need to serve them on their terms. But cohesive user experiences before and after conversion is very challenging without the right technology. And let's face it, legacy infrastructure isn't flexible enough to meet the needs of modern omni-channel retail. Multi-channel requires a single view of inventory, orders, and suppliers across sales channels and fulfillment networks. But traditional systems fall short due to limited visibility across channels, return points, 3PLs, siloed operations that only allow you to connect one sales channel to one inventory source, and really this insufficient support for multiple warehouses, multiple return points, multiple sales channels. So why do people want to embrace multi-channel? Well, because there's some benefits. Things like higher profitability on a skew by skew basis, because by understanding the sales velocity per channel, you could change your inventory based on demand. It also allows you to have scalable growth into new markets. You can test local marketplaces or pop-ups in new cities, and you can introduce your brand to a whole different demographic. It also allows you to have efficient and timely fulfillment workflows. So when you have, when your experiences are connected, you can literally fulfill from anywhere, from your store, from your warehouse, from a 3PL, across the border in Mexico, you name it. And um, you also have strategic and flexible inventory allocation, which is pretty important. Say you're selling out of Amazon, you can add more inventory there. Say you're not selling too well on Shopify or eBay, you could pull your, your inventory back and stay profitable. But most importantly, Connected experiences lead to better customer experiences and ongoing loyalty. You can see here that businesses um, with strong omni-channel strategies retain about 89% of, of their, their customer base. That's nearly three times the amount as uh, companies with weak omni-channel strategies. So there's really no reason not to at least try. Um, so remember when I said legacy systems can't handle the operational workloads of multi-channel retail? That's where Scubana comes in. Here you could see Scubana taking in orders from Amazon, Home Depot, Shopify, and more. They're all organized in a single screen and a single dashboard where you can also manage your inventory, your shipments, your customers, and get 
deep dive on analytics to see how your channels are performing. Here you can see um, just a breakdown. This is only 14 channels. We can connect to hundreds of channels, marketplaces, big box retailers, uh, shopping cart apps, you name it. And you can even set fulfillment zones to save time and money. Uh, when UPS went zonal, it became very expensive to ship from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. So you're able to automate your shipments based on the recipient's address to make sure it's cheaper, more affordable, and it gets there faster. So now that we know you need to be DTE, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Just because a brand is successful with their primary storefront doesn't mean they should forego selling on Amazon. Nowadays, a lot of brands are hesitant because of misconceptions about the level of control and opportunity on the platform. They believe their audience that shops on Amazon may not fit their ICP or that if somebody wants to buy their product, they'll come right to their site. Uh, they might believe that listing and advertising fees are just unprofitable. Um, and you can see here Nike, Ikea, Allbirds, Birkenstocks, Away. These are brands that currently don't sell on Amazon. But the fact is, if you're not being seen, you're not relevant. Whether or not you're on Amazon, your customers could still purchase your products from third-party sellers. Let's take away luggage, for example. The keyword away luggage is getting roughly 75,000 monthly searches on Amazon, even though the brand has zero presence there. So you're seeing competitors like Travel Pro and Samsonite and of course, Amazon Basics really take that share of query, uh, of query volume. And it really makes no sense for a way to at least not have one suitcase on there. You know, consumers prefer centralized experiences that are personal, user-centric, and convenient. And most customers will actually go to Amazon if a brand can't meet their speed or price. So let's get back to the customer because that's what it all comes down to. Here are some things you should always keep in mind. You need to have a presence everywhere, whether that's Amazon, eBay, or Sephora. Um, even if it's just a single SKU, we like to call that a diamond SKU, it's just about having a presence there and controlling your presence. Because if you're selling your products, you'll more than likely be the first result for that branded keyword search. Um, you'll also want to identify big spenders and repeat buyers and reward them for their loyalty. Customers like when you make them feel special and unique. So whether that's including a direct mailer or a special promotion on their next purchase, uh, and a little goes a long way. And just one last thing from Scubana. We have two incredible features that allow you to identify customer value across your channels. This report uh, actually reveals the, the value and frequency of returning customers. So all the way on the right there, you'll see those are customers that have purchased with you 10 or more times, their average shopping cart value and more. And here you have a list of your top most frequent customers. So you can identify who to send that reward to uh, next time around. And lastly, the bonus offer I was talking about, we've created a super exclusive Slack community all about e-commerce and DUC brands. Um, so if you follow this link, you'll be able to access a questionnaire, um, which is essentially the application to get in. And inside, you'll get insights, you'll be able to connect with DUC leaders, um, and we're really excited about this. So be sure to check it out. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Refersion. Hi there. This is Margaret. Thanks so much, Gina. Great, Margaret. Take it away. Thank you. Let's see. Lighting. 
So thanks everyone for joining today. I am from Refersion and looking forward to speaking with everyone. Let's get started here. Okay, so we're going to talk about personalization and we're going to get rid of this here. So how to personalize your brand and how to scale with your influencer marketing. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So personal, this thing is a little sticky. Okay, personalization. What is personalization? Everyone knows a little bit about this. Um, but the one thing we know is it receives better results. So it makes the consumer feel recognized. And I think Gina touched on that a little bit right at the beginning. Um, and the reason why you feel recognized, it makes you feel a little bit more like it's powerful. A promotional email that is addressed to someone with a specific name receives a 41% higher click-through rate. And that's just an ordinary email. That's just email. But what we're going to discuss is much deeper. So right now we're seeing that almost 70% of marketers are investing in personalization. Um, those numbers are growing. So there's challenges, obviously, and what are those challenges? Marketers are still working to connect all of their platforms. So we're seeing that every day across their customer journey. And 33% of consumers who rely on advertising for brand information say they trust its messaging. That's the least um, credible source among all the ones that we surveyed. So consumers agree that most marketing messages they see online are not tailored to them specifically, which causes a lack of interest and can be a feeling of disconnect. So we want everyone to feel connected. We want them to feel strong and that's where the power comes in. So, what is an influencer? It's a big word right now, everywhere. Uh, an influencer is someone who has uh, power. They have the effect of the purchasing decision because of his or her authority, knowledge, position, or relationship uh, with the audience. So a following of, of a distinct niche, uh, one with whom he or she engages with actively, and the size of the following really depends on the size of the topic or the size of that specific niche. But we're seeing 49% of marketers reporting an increasing spend in their influencing marketer, and that was in 2019. So it's growing, and there's a reason why, why it's growing. So why are influencers so great? Influencers are really good because they build a specific community. They are speaking to their audiences directly uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. They know the topic, they're passionate about the topic, and they drive engagement. Think about something you just even bought yesterday. It could be a pack of gum because someone said that flavor tasted good. And it could be a neighborhood that you decided to even go look at to buy a potential house. Everything these days are due to recommendation. Um, one of the best things actually is not only do they believe strongly in what they promote, they're doing a lot of the marketing on your behalf. And that's just because they are absolutely interested, engaged, and want to tell others about what that specific topic is. So there's challenges, obviously, though, with influencers. How do you measure them? How do you know the success? What are the metrics? Um, it could be how do you get someone to speak on your behalf about your brand and how do you get them to scale? And that's really where recursion comes into place because we are the platform that handles that in a very easy, nimble fashion. So um, we've helped lots of other people do that when they want to tap into their influencers and figure out what's working and what's not working. 
And as we mentioned, there's a bunch of different influencers out there. Some you may be familiar with. So there's the mega down to the new one, which is really the super influencers, which is a really new term to me as well. You know, your mega influencer is probably that one that you're talking about is like Kim Kardashian, who's out there and they have millions and millions of followers. You have your macro influencer, I'm sorry, your macro influencers. Um, they could be your professional cre um, creator with strong passion for a specific subject. There's also the mid-tier. There's also a nano. There's probably several different nanos on here. Um, that could be 1,000 followers, someone that is just knows that you have a specific niche on some specific product and you know a lot about that and they're following you. It could be your friends and that's the audience that you've picked up and they really take that to, to heart. So the super influencer, what is the super influencer? Uh, again, that's a new terminology that's coming out rapidly and the super influencer is something that we should be aware of. They are one in every five consumers who are driving others from awareness consider um different strategic postings and that's what they're looking for they are people who have self-expression through brand centric user generated content so they're really kind of an influencer within an influencer and 18.5 percent of all u.s consumers are super influencers um, again they're always on the hunt for new products via social media They are buying all that brand centric content that they are passionate about again, and they're sharing that online. And they see this as a way of really building their online status and expressing their personal brand. So it's a growing segment among much younger consumers. So you're gonna see the Gen Z and the millennials. And um, it's amazing that over 54% report that they would be an influencer if given the opportunity. They don't want money. They don't really care much about that. I'm sure they would take it, however, but it is something that they really feel strong about and they want to share their opinion. So how do you scale? Um, how do you build that influencer? How do you build that ambassador? You have to recruit. You have to get them in. They're really your best and loyal customers. That is the number one thing I always tell people when they say, well, how do I build my affiliates? How do I build my influencers? They are right there. They are the people that are buying from you over and over. They are the people that are writing into you, complimenting you about your brand. Um, a great way to recruit them is make them feel like they are your best customers because they are. Be personal with them, message them, keep them happy, get their ideas, talk to them, speak to them and listen to them. So that's your communication. And then also you're gonna to wanna to incentivize them somehow. Lots of times they just want different types of little information about your brand, something that's new coming out that you could tell them first before anyone else. Um, also any type of gift card, percentage off, even types of swag, that's a t-shirt, a sticker, something like that, helps out, makes them feel happy and makes them feel like part of the team. So that's a little bit about influencers, how to get them there, how to scale. Happy to talk to anyone online, offline. And if you are interested in reversion right now, if you look at that link, um, Scubana offer, we are offering a month trial on our platform. If you'd like to sign in, log on, try it out, and we could walk you through um, how to get started. Thank you, Margaret, that was great. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Robbie from Just Uno, um, and he's going to talk about personalizing a customer journey using AI. So, Robbie, uh, you should have keyboard and mouse access now. Take it away. Here we go. <laughs> okay, Margaret, you weren't lying. This is uh, this thing's a little finicky to get started, but thanks for being the guinea pig on that. <laughs> um, okay, so that was awesome. That was a lot, a lot of great information from Scubana um, and Refersion. And what I want to 
talk about is how you can personalize the customer journey once visitors get to your site. So there's, uh, there's a lot of effort and time and resources spent getting people to your site via influencer marketing, via pay, other pay channels, uh, working on you know your SEO to uh, attract organic traffic. And what we'll talk about is how AI and personalization can really move the needle once users are on your site and you can get that, you can get that sale and you can start to build that customer loyalty. So let me just go ahead and I will be very, sorry about that phone noise in the background. Trying to get to the next page here. Let's see. There we go. So that's me. Um, let's see. Okay, so AI uh, is obviously it's it's affecting a lot of industries, and e-commerce is really no different. And where I think it really plays a big role is it allows marketers to utilize not only visitor data via cookies and uh, and other browser activity but it allows you to uh, create personas and utilize behavior on your site uh, at the session level. So, and I think that this is even more true and we've been talking about a connected customer journey. It's, it's easier for digital native and digital first brands to create that experience and to sort of harness the power of UI and what, uh, what Margaret and Gina were already talking about and what everybody else is going to be talking about. If you're a digital first or a digital native brand, I think that um, the the power is in your hands to really kind of take advantage of, of this um, uh, in a in a really strong way. Um, uh, AI, at least in the form of personalizing content on site, in many cases automates this process for your visitors and for your customers by creating personas. Um, that's what we'll get into a little bit with what uh, with Justino's Commerce AI feature. Um, but it really kind of answers the question of what does this visitor want based on what they and others like them have seen, what they've clicked on, or even what they've previously bought. And that allows, the, that, the way that automates it for you is it creates algorithms and feeds people through algorithms to show them content based on what has worked previously, essentially. So um, it really can cost prohibitive amounts of money and effort, like I said, to just to get people to the site. And uh, those costs are only increasing. So it makes sense uh, to spend more time and, and resources making sure they stay on the site and they actually convert. Um, this is where AI is sort of the crux of it because it, it is scalable and it is personalized and it's sort of set up so that you can um, you can actually put it on your site, you can put it in certain content areas, and it can automate it uh, without you doing more work beyond that. So let me get into a couple of uh, uh, let's see a couple stats here. So uh, one of our partners, Loyalty Lion, um, ran a study, and they found that 74% uh, of customers feel frustrated when content is not personalized to them along with 65% being actually motivated to be loyal because of uh, seeing personalized offers. And uh, beyond that, we found that, uh, or they found that 61% um, were motivated to purchase by, by seeing personalized product recommendations, which we'll get uh, more into. Um, this just kind of plays into how can we utilize AI on-site to drive conversions and how can we do it in a scalable way. So um, another, another kind of newer uh, conversation that I've been having with some retailers and partners in the space is a lot of people uh, think that AI is emerging as an eventual alternative to cookies and fingerprinting, which are becoming less and less popular. Um, Safari is removing the fingerprinting technology and you will start to see with things like the CCPA in California and GDPR obviously, as well as Castle in Canada, you're starting to see this movement away from um, sort of the public data domain in, in the browser and, and people need a successor to that and brands need a way to reach out to customers and to personalize the experience while also keeping the individual users data private and respecting that uh, about them. So um, 
AI is definitely emerging as the eventual, like the alternative to that. And what it means is that it allows you to, to make a shift away from tracking data points uh, through a browser session and utilizing available, what will be the remaining available data points eventually, as well as uh, feeding them, like I said, into an algorithm that makes increasingly accurate predictions about a visitor and what their intent is on the site. And most AI products that, that will be available or currently are available allow you to sort of still segment and filter those algorithms based on the type of visitor and create multiple experiences on the site um, while also having um, you know the utmost respect for, for data for data privacy. So with that, I'd like to get into a little bit about uh, why just you know built our AI product. We've always been known as kind of the the, the email pop-up software and um, we're for a long time we've been moving away from that into a full CRO suite. Uh, and so this being the AI piece is really our most recent and biggest product addition. Uh, it can be used uh, as a layer in, in any display type uh, and such, a, you know, you can use it in a banner, you can use it within a page, which is certainly probably the most popular option, um, or even in a pop-up. And these are all product recommendations being shown in these multiple display types, uh, which ultimately this gives you the flexibility to shape the experience, drive uh, conversions, and still have do all of that alongside a really positive user experience on the site. You can experiment with different ways of showing product recommendations. Um, one great example I can think of is a lot of people in the current state, even if you are using UI for your uh, product recommendations on a product page, that is usually happening far below the fold, maybe above, maybe below a review section. And what you can do with Just You Know's AI is you can actually drop that into a banner. And that banner can be triggered on scroll or it can be triggered from an add to cart action, uh, which we'll get into a little bit. That That's a little bit um, looking at AI and the customer funnel. Um, that's certainly a very exciting prospect to target people in those different stages and find out what works best for your site, right? So um, let's see. Um, I'm just uh, reviewing my notes here. Um, with our product recommendations, uh, you can combine an automated intelligent product recommendation engine to show these relevant products uh, to visitors, not only based on data, but um, their own behavior and then parallel behaviors from other visitors and what maybe they have purchased. So um, talking about uh, going a little bit further to is uh, you can get into upselling and cross-selling using AI, and this is becoming a lot more popular you're using a slide out cart and you want to show something in an in like an upsell window or a bundling opportunity within uh within your slide out cart for instance you're able to do that set that up once and then it's automatically going to present um products that are most frequently bought or most viewed with what that person just added into their cart so um let's see let me go to the next page here so I wanna talk a little bit about uh, AI in the marketing funnel and things that you can do. This I was sort of just touching on this with different ideas, but you have probably different goals unless you're someone with a very low AOV store. Uh, if, if you're sort of a mid-range, if you're over 60 to $100 in AOV, you're probably looking at funnels more closely and maybe defining different goals for different stages of that funnel. So how can you use AI in each one? Um, it, if someone, in my opinion, has broad intent, meaning they're a new visitor to a site, uh, what, what can you do to potentially move the needle on sales conversions or at least increase that interest in your brand? You can do things like, um, you can personalize the experience based on a paid channel that maybe they click through, which sort of fits into, I think, what we're all discussing today. You can um, you can show what's most popular. Um, what we might usually recommend as a strategy for utilizing AI is showing recommendations more in pages that 
reveal what they, that show the recommendation once their intent is revealed so if they get to a product page you know there there's a little bit higher intent there there's a little bit more of a reason to show product recommendations or some sort of personalized content there uh aside just from knowing the channel that they came from uh <clears throat> we have uh, algorithms to use for this that is just show the most viewed products on my website further down the funnel um, someone's uh, viewing a product or maybe they're returning back to the site, I would argue that generally the goal changes from that point. And you go from a, let's show them what is most popular to, let's show them what they previously viewed. Let's personalize the experience based on what this person was looking for. And um, once we can, our, our goal will be to get maybe an add to cart action. And we wanna influence that, right? So algorithms that you might use that are out of the box for just you know camp commerce ai are most purchased or what you previously viewed and we also bring in filters so you can filter that based on you know a shopify customer tag or a or a product tag or a category or sale items for instance so um so maybe if you're a higher aov store maybe you want to show returning visitors some sale products that um that they might be interested in so Further down the funnel, once you get to someone who has previously added to cart uh, or their previous customers even, that goal is purely let's get them to convert, right? Um, offer an upsell or a cross sell to previous customers because you know that they'll buy and then you can see, you can start to see major lifts in, in AOV uh, by showing them upsell and cross sell promotions. And we have uh, tons of examples of people doing this now and it's all about keeping that journey personal to that user based on what they've already added to cart. And it makes your life a lot easier when AI is determining what product to show in that, uh, in that regard. So um, this is another point to use our algorithm filters um, to, to filter based on tag, based on you can force include items that maybe you know only repeat purchasers um, buy. So let's see. Going to the next slide here. Did I get it? There we go. So um, let's see. We offer a few out of the box ways for you to take advantage of scalable AI, meaning it won't be, this does not have to be a daunting task or really kind of a time suck to get started. Uh, like I said, we offer five starting point algorithms to help dictate where products uh, or what products to recommend based on given data. So we have an upsell algorithm that is going to show relevant products to the one being viewed at a higher price. We have a cross sell algorithm that will show relevant products in different categories. So think like, you know, red t-shirts with black pants or something like that. We also have a generally most viewed algorithm and most purchased. And then our fifth and most recent is what that specific visitor previously viewed. And so these are great starting points and they're out of the box and you don't have to do anything except create, you know, select that algorithm and launch it. However, we do offer what I mentioned before uh, were filters. And these filters were part of a feedback loop that we got from our customers saying essentially, you know, we love the algorithms, but we want to filter this and create yet an even more granular drill down experience um, some examples of how you might use filters would be product tags um, only show women's t-shirts for this particular um, you know if someone's only shopping in the women's category only show them women's t-shirts um, show out of stock bestsellers so someone can get on the list the next time it's around and this is especially you see this very commonly with like furniture uh, retailers uh, like all modern or article um, or CB2, people like that, they will constantly ask you to submit your email if an item is out of stock once you've gotten to that product page because they know it's a bestseller. Uh, force include products uh, that that um, are often that maybe you sell few products and you just know that this one accessory is, is bought with every single one of your main products, you can force include that product. Um, or you can show only discounted products, again, if you're a, a, maybe a higher AOV uh, store. So let's see, this is uh, what I'm showing here. This is an example of what our recommendation rule looks like. Uh, 
if once it starts over again. So down here or up here at the top, these are our five algorithm choices. And then you can see the filters and you can see me including a tag for uh, a certain category or a collection name into my rule. So that's me customizing <clears throat> my algorithm even further and allows you to run, if you'd like, you can run multiple algorithms on different pages. So here's some data to, uh, to back up what AI is doing for the on-site product recommendation experience. So it's an upsell, it's meaning it's showing relevant products at a higher price. Um, and Shannon Toad sells, uh, sells baby clothes and accessories. And so uh, it's used based on, it's on a product page right now. So you can see it down at the bottom of uh, the sort of scrolling page here. Um, it, recommend, it recommends similar items at a higher price. Uh, and then if, you know, if there's always a fallback option, right? If there's not enough data to produce this, then you can show most purchased products. So overall, they've seen 9.72 engaged conversion rate from this uh, product recommendation, which means that almost 10% of the people that view this click through it to a similar product and end up purchasing. So that's, um, I think that's a pretty, that's, I would consider that a significant driver of conversions. And I'm gonna move over to another example too. This is uh, a client that works closely with us, they're called Brian Anthony's. And they have, like I was mentioning earlier, a, a carousel, they have a carousel cross-sell offer. So once either you get to a checkout page or it even shows in their slide out cart area, it um, shows it, it is a dynamic layer that presents products that are most frequently bought with the item that is in that visitor's cart. So you could line up 10 visitors with different items in their cart and they'd all see the same just, you know, um, they'd see the same just, you know, uh, layer in the slide out cart, but they would all see different items. And they have uh, options here to add the item to cart. There's multiple variants, obviously, that go with, this is a jewelry company, so they have multiple variants. And so you select the variant from the just, you know, pay, or from this, um, from this layer within the page, and you can select that layer, add it to cart, and then they can move. This person's already almost at the checkout area, so that's why I believe it's such a popular option is to get people right before that checkout experience. Um, and so they've seen a 2.3% lift in company uh, revenue since launching this, in the first three months since launching this. And so 126% in, increase in engaged conversion rate um, over standard opt-ins with discount. So they're comparing this to offering a discount when you submit your email, for instance, which we don't wanna take anything away from that top of funnel but this is very bottom of funnel. So where I think you can take, what the most I think you can take from this 126% um, number is probably, you know, when someone gets to this stage and this close to checkout, is it better to offer them a great deal on another product versus trying to get them to go through a barrier like entering their email for a giveaway or entering their email for this cross-sell product? I would argue no. I would say your goal is to get the sale, so get the sale. Um, and so let's see here. So with just, you know, how can you get started? Uh, just, you know, plus is one of our starting, starting, um, offerings that allows you to run commerce AI on your store, um, get your product and order feeds into just, you know's, uh, algorithms. And it all also offers, a, offers, um, a great service level side where you're working with a customer strategist that is not only helping you run just you know plus but they're also giving you a roadmap for your first three to six months using our product um, and how you can uh, drive the most roi and and target as many different segments high value segments as possible um that's it for me uh my name is rob hammett again i'm the director of solutions at just you know thank you very much for listening and if you'd like to reach out for any reason there's my email right there i'm happy to help Thanks, Rob. Uh, that was really great. Super interesting uh, to see how Just Uno is leveraging AI uh, to enhance the customer journey. Um, next, once you've targeted those customers, how do you convert them with engaging photography?
Um, I'm going to pass it over to Brian from Pixels. Um, Brian, you have mouse control now, and um, I've unmuted you, so take it away. Cool. Thanks, guys. Robbie, perfect intro here for me. We're going to get you guys now some high converting content to uh, use in your just Uno uh, AI driven pop ups and, uh, and widgets here. So make sure that you guys have some great content for influencers and uh, all the multi different channels you're selling on here. So um, with that, let me make sure I can click through. Okay, there we go. It's Brian Guidry. I'm a partner at pixels.com. Um, I've been in the retail industry for about 20 years. Um, yeah, and I'll just quickly about pixels. Uh, pixels is an online image editing platform. Um, we've got a little bit of lag. One second. Okay, there we go. Um, similar to Rob, we're also um, an AI-powered platform. So um, it's, we actually use a hybrid model where we're using uh, a professional retouchers to retouch images at scale, but we also automate about 60% of that process with AI. So a very different use case for AI and e-com, um, but you can see that there's a lot of different companies out there attacking it at different angles. Okay, so just quickly, um, Pixels is going to be the easiest way for you to edit, retouch, and optimize images for Okay. Uh, Gina, I've got a little bit of a click-through issue, but we you will. Also, use the keyboard if that yeah. is here. That's what I'm doing. I guess we got a little bit of a lag, so sorry about that, guys. Um, great. So on the presentation today, um, I wanted to focus in <laughs> again. Um, we're going to show you. I think the first is about how to prep images to um yeah really to start driving conversions okay second is going to be about creating immersive product content so what kind of content do you actually need to be creating across that um that you're exposing your your buyers to and then three is really just tying it all together and adding consistency um across the board so to really start driving more sales and also to reduce returns okay so with that, we'll dive into the first strategy here. Okay, so um, again, we're gonna talk about just general prep on your imagery. Um, I think just to start, most people think that retouching is a bad word. It's, got a, it's, gotten, it's getting a pretty bad rap these days, okay? But when it comes to your product imagery, um, retouching is really about focus, okay? It's about eliminating distractions. It's about saving your creative team time in the studio. It's about reducing returns, and it's also about increasing sales. Okay, so um, what we're talking about here, I've got several different examples. We'll just run through them quickly because I'm sure most of you are familiar um, with the types of uh, retouching out there. But yeah, you know, here we've got a mannequin. We're, we're removing that, stripping it from your product imagery, right, just to allow your customers to focus in on the product itself. Um, Simple things like symmetry and removing wrinkles, and you know we're not doing anything to distort a product image here, but where product shines and it really kind of giving it the best foot forward here when your customers are exposed to it. Okay, um, you'd be surprised even how many major retailers are are just committing some very basic things. Um, you know, in footwear, obviously uh, white backgrounds are pretty standard these days, but even things like glue and dust and thread and maiden labels and sizing, all of these things can actually distract your buyers from the actual product that you're trying to sell them, right? So it's about trying to make sure that they're focusing in on uh, on that product. Um, just an obvious hope, I don't know how many of you guys have a pirate tattoo, but I want just an extreme case here. Um, you know, this is again, you know, I want the, the, I want our buyers to be focusing in on the product 
not the latest tattoo the model comes in on, right? So just things like that. We're not talking about body shape. We're not talking about the, the bad word retouching here. These are just basic things we can do to make sure that we're really representing our brand the best way possible, okay? Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of people think, you know, retouching isn't going to have a significant impact on their sales, or maybe it's not even relevant for their brand. We, we hear that a lot. We work with thousands and thousands of retailers. Um, the truth is that uh, we work with a lot of the largest retailers in the industry, and 100% of, like, the Internet Retailer 500 that uses pixels are using retouching services, okay? Um, and even the anti, you know, body shape retouching brands like um, American Eagle, Airy, ASOS, and ModCloth, um, they staff retouchers and they are retouching product images day and they're just doing a different type of retouching in terms of uh, removing distractions here. Okay. Um, so second thing, now we're going to talk about what kind of content you need. I think um, obviously when we're talking about a connected customer journey, um, content is front and center. It's uh, extremely important that you guys get this right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, oftentimes I think, especially for retailers that are, you know, in growth mode, um, they think a couple images are just enough to sell. Maybe they're not thinking about detail or contextual lifestyle imagery, editorials. Um, maybe, they, you know, not thinking about rich media, all that, you know, AR, VR, spin to choose from, right, when it comes to content production for e-com. Um, and so the reality is, as you guys all know, you know, if you're just a, a straight D2C brand, I mean, you are competing with offline experiences, right, where uh, shoppers can touch and smell and hear and maybe even taste a product uh, before they buy it. And this, right, and they're investing billions of dollars to create these immersive online experiences and it's extremely important that you get this right um, just a quick quote uh, from a couple months back in a conference in LA the CEO at the net porte Yolks group um, this is in, in reference to the product imagery on their site right the actual imagery on one of the leading fashion brands globally they're considering it as a strategic asset this is the the new data for their company okay Um, oh, looks like, yeah, net -Porte again, you know, they've been a first mover for years with really building out immersive product description pages. Um, one of the first brands to have, you know, video, product video on every single PDP. Um, you know, the other things like, you know, adding in spins or detailed shots, um, here they're actually combining both lifestyle imagery with the you know white background you know straight on man uh, this would be like a 3d mannequin shot here um so really you know allowing customers to get in here and and be able to to see different types of, of uh really kind of envision themselves in this product another new example i wanted to show you um that's been getting some press recently is from asos uh the uk based retailer they've actually been testing a you know a 16 different model variant technology so on their pdp pages you can actually see um different 16 different models different nationalities different races um that are that are in that in that product right so really allowing the customer to envision themselves in in the product and i don't know why my slide is not going forward here guys these arrows are still holding me back here there we go there models I don't know if you've seen this but um, yeah obviously it's a, a very different experience than what you, is is found on most uh, sites today okay okay so um, you know what is the impact right of adding all of this content to a site you know how is a, how are a few extra images going to impact sales on a very basic level um, you know just by adding professionally edited to a PDP page, you're looking at like a 16% boost in conversion, not going into rich media. So that's not talking about new experiences like what we're seeing here with ASOS with, with AR, VR applications. So this is a major river if you do get this right. Okay, on, on to three. And now we're going to 
really just talking about consistency across the board. Um, Rob had also mentioned, you know, about y using, um, you know, actually, uh, you know, once you have your users on the site, right? How are you reduce? How are you? What do you do down your bounce rate? I think for us, consistency um, when it terms comes to imagery has actually been proven that this is a, um, a major driver of actually getting your bounce rates down. So we're going to take a couple examples of that. Um, yeah, you know, I think a couple things um, that people often think when they're thinking about creative, you know, creative photography isn't, um, you know, maybe you have teams that are creating imagery for different channels. So you have your, your Instagram social team and you have your email team and you have your web team. Um, and then color, you know, it's color. When I talk about color, we're talking about product, product image color. Um, it, it's oftentimes an afterthought, right? Um, or, hey, this is, it, it, you know, is, is it constant? The is that, um, you know, consistent, accurate, creative across your channels is actually helping your brand identity, right? And help action, okay? Um, and again, like that consistent online shopping experience, it's going to keep shoppers on your site longer. So super important. A um, couple examples from a, a major D2C brand based in New York. You guys know Imjemi. Uh, it's one of their category pages. It's just beautiful imagery across the board. Um, I pulled a couple other examples from both their Instagram feed and also their PDP pages. Um, we're seeing extremely consistent use of imagery. They're matching color channels. So, like you know, the lifestyle images, the um, even like the product shots that I'm seeing in Instagram are matching 100% to what I'm seeing on a PDP page. Again, you know, it's just leveling that expectation. I'm seeing a, a lifestyle editorial image. When I actually get driven back to the site, you know, the colors are gonna look exactly the same. When I receive that product at home, it's gonna look the same, right? It's, it's stitching that all together to make sure that there's no surprises and that you have a consistent experience throughout. Okay, so um, you know a lot of top, people often think you know if you have the same photographer and even the same studio setup, you're going to get consistency. Um, and hey, this is just color, right? How important is it? Um, the reality is it, it's it could be very it's very far from the truth. You know, like different lighting setups, um, especially if you're shooting outside for lifestyle editorial, totally different from uh, a studio setup. And then even within the studio lighting. I think just a, a major take home, um, make sure that your teams are matching color across products, channels, and also media types, okay? Just it's, that's going to be one of the major ways that, that you can drive down returns, okay? Um, another tactic that you can use is have your teams create you know, a style guide for, you know, for category-specific style guides, okay? Just so that every time you're processing imagery, it's done in a consistent way. Um, and that the teams involved know ex Okay, so um, that's what I've got from my side, guys. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about pixels and see, you know, how some of the world's leading online retailers are editing and retouching product images for e-commerce, just go on and head over to pixels.com. Uh, case studies that um, we'll get into the details on that. And again, this is a, a hybrid where we're combining a, a, a large um, uh, group of professional retouchers with some image editing AI to really allow you guys to create a consistent uh, product experience across the board. So I'm also happy to um, answer any questions. So if anyone would like, to, you can just reach me at brian at pixels.com. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Um, I'll be turning it over to Katie from Octane AI next. Um, and she's going to go over um, how to supercharge your store with Facebook Messenger and SMS marketing. Uh, so, Katie, you have mouse and keyboard access. Take it away. Katie, I think you have to unmute yourself. There we go. The unmute was sticking there. 
Um, how's everybody doing today? I hope well. So I am Katie. Um, I am from Octane AI. And if you have any questions at all during this whole presentation, please feel free to email me directly. I'm katie at octaneai.com. So before I start, um, we did a little poll that asked you whether you're using Messenger and SMS marketing, and roughly half of you are, half of you are not. Um, so I'll first cover what is Messenger and SMS marketing. There we go. So at its basic level, Messenger and SMS are two channels that you can reach customers directly. Um, so you can send them new product launches or timely messages, personalized messages. Um, the power is that you can reach people directly when you have that important message. So typically they have higher open rates um, and it's really underutilized by brands. But these are also two channels that are pretty scary for brands to implement. Um, they don't know the best way to go about it. How often do you message your customers? What type of messaging do you use? Are you gonna implement the same or strategy you use for email? So it's a bit daunting, um, but my number one piece of advice here is to not implement the exact same strategy that you use for email. So these are two separate channels, um, but they work best alongside email. So now, I'll go into some statistics. So they speak for themselves, um, much higher open rates, higher click-through rates. Per message, you can typically see a much higher return on investment, um, generating more revenue per message than a regular piece of communication on email. And then SMS is actually a bit higher. So over 95% average open rates, 35% average click-through rates and 25 times return on investment. So even if you have a smaller messenger or SMS list, um, you can actually generate more or equal revenue to a much larger email list. Um, but that definitely comes with a lot of careful planning, strategy, how you're gonna message somebody um, and when you're gonna message someone. So how do you successfully build out your messenger and SMS list? Um, I think this comes back to the customer journey because it's not about taking your existing customer base and then starting to message them all on SMS. It's about allowing customers on site, on Facebook, wherever, wherever they might be, um, the option to be messaged on Messenger and SMS. So if you're not using Messenger and SMS right now, um, maybe you have customers that you're sending emails to that you could just send one SMS to that they'd open, engage with, um, and purchase from that one message. So you can embed opt-ins onto your site. So for Messenger, um, you can embed a chat widget, you can have pop-ups, check boxes on your add to cart, under your add to cart button. Um, you can have an opt-in on your order confirmation page if you wanted to send somebody a shipping confirmation on Messenger. Um, and we also have an integration with Just Uno. So if you have a Just Uno pop-up, you can add that messenger checkbox underneath email, and then maybe somebody submits their email and opts into messenger at the same time. So it's really about providing the option to be messaged on other channels for your customers. Um, the chat embed is pretty interesting because that's a really cool way to guide somebody through that purchase process. So you can have that chat embed on every page of your website. You can just have it on product pages, um, and you can provide someone the opportunity to ask questions as they're looking through your site. Um, maybe you have makeup that somebody wants to know about the ingredients, or is it vegan? Um, you can create different artificially intelligent responses to trigger and help guide them through the site as they purchase. When you're doing that, they also opt into Messenger. Um, so if they add to cart and then they abandon their purchase, you can then send them an abandoned cart flow on Messenger. So with the on-site chat widget itself, um, Skinny Mixes, in the initial conversation, when somebody opts into that chat widget, um, they opted in nearly 13.5% of all visitors and converted 10% to a sale. And so they had um, a discount that's offered through the chat widget itself, and then a number of different smart responses to help answer someone's questions about products, ingredients, how long it lasts, expiration, all of that. 
So another really cool way to opt people in and also take them from other places on the internet and bring them back to your site is with something called a Facebook comment capture. So when somebody comments on a Facebook post, you can actually trigger an automatic message on Messenger. Um, once they interact with that, not only are they subscribed on Messenger, so you can retarget them with direct messages, but you can then send them a link to go to your site. So someone might then go from commenting on your Facebook post into Messenger where they can have a conversation with your brand and then being sent back to your site. So that's a great way of moving somebody from Facebook to your Shopify site when you know that they're engaged and they're commenting on your posts. And so the same thing goes for other channels. Um, something that's not well known is that anybody who chats with your brand's Facebook Messenger actually opts into Messenger. So you don't have to have on-site embedded opt-in tools or pop-ups. Um, you can have somebody actually just visit a link to your brand's Messenger, and then they'll engage with your brand, and you can send them back to your site and have them opted into Messenger. So if you had a product quiz or some engaging um, conversational content that you had, you could have that swipe up on your Instagram story, send them into Messenger, and bring them back to your site. And that's a great way to take someone from Instagram over into Messenger where they subscribe and then back to your Shopify site. So on the SMS side, right now we support SMS opt-ins through the checkout, which you can actually do in your Shopify checkout settings in your back end. Um, and that gives someone the opportunity to enter their email or mobile phone number. You can ask for phone numbers through Facebook Messenger, same as email, um, or you could run other campaigns and then import opted in numbers. So asking for data through Messenger is really powerful because you can get extremely creative. Um, so Rick Ross, who's one of our customers, does a good job of this. So he has a VIP um, menu item that someone can request an invite to. And then he asks, what's your email address? What's your phone number? Um, and in the top there, he says, I'll send you a message when I, when I got something new. So that lets the person know that when they give this information, um, they'll likely be messaged on that channel. So adding in that language is pretty important just because it sets the expectation that someone will be messaged. Um, if they provide their email or their phone number there. Messenger and SMS, it's most powerful when it's used alongside email. Um, so if they're a Messenger subscriber, maybe don't send them a full email flow. Instead, send them something that they can interact with directly on Messenger. Um, so if you're a coffee brand, send them, oh, there we go. freaking out on me here. Now I know what everybody was talking about. <laughs> there we go. So if you're a coffee brand, um, maybe you send them an interactive conversation about what kind of coffee they like. If they answer that they like dark roast coffee versus blonde roast, you can actually use that data to send them more personalized messages. So instead of just blasting your SMS list with, hey, we have a sale, hey, we have a sale, you say, hey, Brian, I know that you like dark roast coffee. Um, we have this new product that just launched. It's going to go quick, but we thought you'd like to know about it. And that's a really great way to build a relationship, to send a personalized message, um, and also to generate more revenue just because it feels more personal. So here are some engaging campaigns that you can run. So if you're running Facebook ads, this is honestly a huge no-brainer. Um, how most Facebook ads work is somebody clicks the ad, they're sent to a landing page or to the site, a pop-up occurs, or something to try to capture their information like email. Um, and then you chase them around the internet with retargeting ads with your Facebook pixel. So if you're not using click to messenger ads, they're super easy to use. All it does is it clicks or it changes that call to action from a landing page to messenger. So when somebody clicks that ad, they're sent into messenger where they can 
engage with content that you've set up, ask questions, and be sent back to your site. Um, when they do this, you now have their information to retarget with a direct message instead of more ads on the internet. So EarthFed Muscle, Muscle actually did this. All they did was switch their regular ad to a click to messenger ad and their return on ad spend went up 14 times. So using ad copy and ad content that already works and just switching it is a really great way to test how a click to messenger ad works um, and start to increase your messenger list as well. So this is what we typically recommend starting with, um, a prospecting ad to a new audience using your best performing prospecting audience, um, offering maybe a discount, exclusive content, and then also running a retargeting ad. So with a purchase conversion, um, offering someone a discount who's maybe visited your site um, and hasn't given their email already. So you haven't sent them any emails, they're not opted in. And then we also have a 250 page playbook, um, octaneai.com slash playbook. This is super in depth. Um, it takes you through all the steps to integrating email, SMS, uh, messenger, and running different ad campaigns. I'll pass it back to Gina. Great. Thank you so much, Katie. That was really interesting. Um, and now, last but not least, we have Peter from Mute 6, followed by um, a brief question and answer session. So if anybody has any questions, just and enter them in the chat box and we'll be sure to get to them. Um, whether we do it through the question and answer session or via email, um, just to be respectful of everyone's time. Okay, so next up we have Peter um, from Mute6. Peter, I'm passing over uh, mouse control to you now um, and take it away. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that break while we waited for the mute to turn off. Uh, hello and hi, welcome everyone. My name is Peter Starr Northrup. I'm here at Mute 6 and me and my exceedingly shiny forehead are trying to put an exclamation point on this awesome presentation. Um, I don't wanna take up too much of your time uh, now that we've gotten a lot of uh, perspective from these awesome tech partners. So let me just give you a little bit of how creative can help maintain context about your customer journey throughout the kinetic customer journey that you're trying to make here. At the same time, if you want a full perspective from us, you can feel free to check us out on YouTube. It's the same loud noises, same shiny forehead, but a lot more in depth and not taking up too much of your time this morning or this afternoon. So I just want to talk very quickly about context and distraction while you're thinking about building out these um, connected customer journeys, the most important thing to keep in mind is that what, what you are doing is trying not to get one large yes when you're trying to get a customer to buy, but a sequence of really small micro yeses. The way you really win with these customer journeys is by focusing on product and intent, specifically product intent itself, and getting those micro conversions every step of the customer journey. And not only that, but making sure that you're developing creative in a way that it goes across all platforms. You heard from the brilliant people at Pixels on how to make sure you can repurpose your content across channels Doing that maintains context, which is going to overall increase your ability to buy across every aspect of your marketing stack. At the same time, uh, if I could give any recommendation to folks in the audience who are looking for a single channel to focus on right now, it's absolutely influencer. We have an influencer team here at Mute6. It's the fastest growing team we have here. And Reversion is also doing some really stunning things when it comes to influencer management. It's a really interesting and unique place to work. And instead of like being a part of your Instagram or Facebook stack, what it's turning into is its own channel with its own context, which is absolutely gigantic. So be sure to, um, if you had to focus on anything top of funnel, focus there, build these influencer relationships, get that UGC, get that influencer content, and you're going to see just absolutely insane uh, return on ad spend there, considering that influencer marketing can be very, very cost effective. At the same time, folks, I want to make sure that once you are in the actual marketing platforms, let's keep in mind that the whole reason we're talking about a connected customer journey is that all of this ad spend, all the cost in these platforms on Facebook and Google, it's going up. So what you have to do is make sure you're managing that spend as best as possible. And at the same time, both Google and Facebook are putting AI in the driver's seat of these processes. So what you need to do, the levers you can actually pull are within creative itself. It's great that the robots are in control. The AI product over at Just Uno is absolutely stunning in terms 
terms of the way that it helps you target folks on site and maintain that context and maintain the and uh, sorry, reduce that distraction once you ha have the good fortune of getting folks onto your website. But let's talk about very quickly, just the act of getting people into these funnels. I wanna talk very, very briefly about the start of the process. We've seen the whole journey itself. Let me just give you a very quick insight on how you start that customer journey with solid ads. I'm gonna focus on the Facebook platform here. If you want more perspective, again, check us out on YouTube. That's just go to YouTube, search Mute6 or go to mute6.com slash videos to check out. Again, same shiny forehead, same loud noises, but a lot more instead of taking up even more of your morning. So when we think about hooks, I just wanna make sure, and I'm sorry for the lag that the slide's going to cause, you're probably going to see me just completely blur out right now, forgive me for that. But at the same time, when you're thinking about hooks and you're thinking about building creative, focus on your products and excite your audience with that product. Create a little bit of interest by showing the product in use. Focus on the product itself, don't pan out, Focus in when you're doing your shoots, when you are building out creative, if you work with an agency, if you do everything internally, focus on your products itself and build that curiosity. And I'm gonna go away from that slide just to make sure we don't blow up. Um, I just wanna make sure we don't completely blow up the stream. I understand with the webcam and the GIFs, like you might've just seen me completely pixel out. When you're thinking about building creative, I wanna make sure that you're also thinking about all the different ways you can repurpose that creative because maintaining context throughout this customer journey is absolutely paramount. And if you can pick one place, one thing to focus on as a marketer, as somebody in this e-commerce or D2C space, I highly recommend you focus on product intent. That is, you focus on your products in your ads, you get onto a landing experience that is central around that product and educating your audience around that product. And then you have your optimization, say from just Uno, to focus on getting people to either learn more about that product by opting into email, or even more importantly, getting your folks to opt into Messenger and SMS. We're seeing just, again, staggering, staggering conversion rates. So focusing on how you can unify that with Octane AI is absolutely gigantic audience in terms of, again, maintaining that context. So when you think about that, all I want you to do really, again, I don't wanna take up too much of everyone's time, is just thinking about how you can use creative as sort of the tip of the spear to build this contextual journey. Make sure that you are discovering where your audience is and keeping your spend fluid. If people are more on Facebook, put more spend there. If they're more on Google, put more spend there. A really quick tip, one thing we're seeing right now is that if you acquire folks using video via YouTube ads and retarget them in Facebook, we're seeing that sort of acquisition spend in Google is a little bit lower and at the same time retargeting spend in Facebook is also a little bit lower. So play those two platforms off of each other by utilizing services like Just Uno to build out the actual email list you have. Make sure you maintain that context on site, maintain that context throughout the platforms via your creative, and you're going to have a great time building this connected customer journey. At the same time, make sure that when you're doing your shoots, you're thinking about ways to repurpose all of your creative so it all looks the same. This is why a service like Pixels is absolutely critical when you're trying to build these connected customer journeys. And the most important thing, I've kind of alluded to this the whole time, is developing those network effects, finding ways you can get the duopoly to play off of each other, making sure that you're on Amazon as well. If you're a D2C company and you're really just starting out, we, at the very beginning of this, Gubanum pointed out that it's absolutely paramount to be on Amazon. If you're not on the Amazon platform, you are absolutely leaving money on the table. So keep all this in mind and get find ways to have all of the information you get from all of these customers on all of these platforms find ways to use your website as the hub around which all of those marketing um, perspectives revolve around and you're going to see incremental growth that's essentially the whole ethos here at mute six if i can get through that in like literally uh less than five minutes but make sure that when you're on site you're tailoring all of your landing experiences to match the context of every ad you do that either via building a bunch of landing pages, which is what we did back in the day, or using utilizing services like Just Uno to contextualize every single part of that customer journey. But the most important thing is using the tools that were laid out here. We at Mute6 work with basically everyone at the bottom of the screen right here, Scubana, Just Uno, Octane, Pickles, and Reversion, and we could not recommend any of them more. All of them, the whole cast of characters here is absolutely paramount in terms of building that really stunning customer journey from start to finish. Um, at the same time, when you're thinking about playing that SMS and messenger game, make sure you're utilizing email as kind of like your testing ground there. Email will always be kind of the bread and butter of retention marketing, but at the same time, you're going to have a lot of really great discovery and a lot of really great um, 
uh, wins if you play that SMS and messenger game. And with that, once you maintain that context on your products, that's going to be a great way to focus out and start out. And the only other piece of advice I can give you all is build that incrementally. So thinking about how you can go from one win and build up to the next win, so on and so forth. You don't have to do this all, the, all at once. You have to do it incrementally, but that's your major goal when you're trying to build these connected customer journeys. Thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Gina and the Scubana team, thank you so much for having Mute 6 on this awesome presentation. I could not be more delighted to be here. If you want to learn more from the Mute 6 perspective, again, just search for us on YouTube. You'll see the same, literally this exact configuration, just slightly less pixelated. I really appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon slash morning. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, we're actually out of time today. Uh, so if anybody has any further questions, um, you could email me directly or you can contact any of these uh, great brands uh, through their site. I will be sharing a recording um, within the next 24 hours. So you'll be able to rewatch this um, at your leisure. Uh, thank you everyone and thank you so much to our panelists for taking the time out this morning um, and sharing all these insights with you. Have a great rest of your day and week.